Oscar Peterson, one of your idols was Nat King Cole. And I have a very strange question. You did a recording once as a tribute to Nat King Cole where you were singing. And amongst all the musicians I know, this is one of the real treasure chests. And everybody always asks, why did he ever stop singing? I mean, you're the piano player, but you're also a fantastic singer. Why did you, do you never do that again after that record? Well, Peter, I don't take my singing that seriously. I really did the record uh, <clears throat> because, only because, when Nat unfortunately died, I thought, as sometimes happens, other singers, singers or vocalists, would do something to pay tribute to him because he was such a monster in the field. Uh, we won't even talk about his piano playing, but in the, certainly in the vocal field, it was where his popularity primarily was. And I th really envisioned that there be, be, would be a couple of tribute albums to Nat, and I was quite surprised when nothing was done, and I called Norman Granz and said I wanted to make an album as a tribute to the guy that I loved, and I know a lot of other people love. So I did the album, and Norman said, well, of course you're going to have to sing. I said, well, that's fine. I'll sing, and let's do the whole thing, get it, and we did. Uh, after I did the album, uh, I just walked away from it. I, I didn't intend, I don't really intend to sing. I have enough trouble playing the piano as it is. Are you putting us I'm on? Serious. <laughs> I'm serious. But... Yeah. As a musician with such a high standard, artistic standard, and you are probably also somebody who asks the same high level of everybody who works with you, do you expect the same quality also when it comes to your hobbies? Uh, I try, but as there, nothing takes a place of music with me, Peter. That's my first and foremost love, and uh, so I expect to do that the way I would like to do it. I expect that. But hobbies are done for relaxation. Yes, but I know uh, when it comes, for example, to Bordeaux, <laughs> you, <laughs> you have also your very... Uh, <laughs> don't take any cheap wines. I mean, it's got to be quality, right? <laughs> well, I love the good wines, yes, I do. I think you also do fishing as a... I'm a fly fisherman, yes. Fly fisherman. Does that mean you make your own lures? My own flies? Yeah. Uh, I have tried it, but uh, I haven't been too successful at that. But fly fishing is very difficult. I mean... Fly fishing in itself is... I think every, every part of it, Peter, is very difficult. The, it's not, I think people think it's just a matter of being able to throw the fly. I think it's very difficult to certainly tie a fly, to know how to tie a fly. It's certainly important to know how to throw a fly and what kind of line to use, but it's also very important to be able to read the water to see what's on the water so you know what to throw. If you are going to do fishing as you play the piano, the poor fish better beware. <laughs> they don't know it yet. <laughs>
do you have any affinity or what is your uh, thought about music that is only in part stems only in part has only in part something to do with jazz for example brazilian music well i think that uh, each form of music many times not always but many times has an influence on others uh, i happen to be an admirer and a lover of brazilian music i think it's some of the most beautiful music in the world and as you well know The jazz world reached out many years ago to embrace a lot of that music, as did the Brazilians reach out to embrace a lot of our music. So I think that in the two music forms that you called, you found two very compatible uh, musics within themselves that, are, that can be interchanged. It isn't every form of uh, music that, be, that can be interchanged one with the other, whether it be jazz and Brazilian or jazz and pop or classical or something. They, they don't always work that well together. But Brazilian music and jazz were brothers. There is one thing that always astonishes people. There is not much being talked about Oscar Peterson, the composer. But you did a lot of works uh, for symphony orchestras. You, you wrote suites, uh, the Canadian suite. and. Are you doing any of these projects at the moment? Uh, I have an African suite that is just about finished. Um, I am in, I've written, recently written a couple of new tunes, one of which I've been featuring on this particular tour called The Love Ballad, that people seem to enjoy. And I'm thinking and considering whether or not to write some music for the upcoming Olympics. When you see what happens in today's, uh, in the contemporary music, not only in jazz, uh, are you sad to see a lot of electronic instruments coming up? Or uh, you, you would never play an electronic instrument, right? No, I wouldn't say I wouldn't. I have. I'm not against electronic instruments. I think it's a step forward in the field of music, it just depends on how they're used and by whom they're used. What concerns me more, Peter, is the, uh, not to jump on one medium uh, per se, but for instance, in the current pop parade of music, um, my biggest complaint is that that music really is biased because it, I think it favors vocalists and hasn't produced that many soloists and players. And we're all players in the jazz medium, so we admire players. And uh, I would like to see more players come out of that medium. Uh, insofar as the use of electronic um, instruments, I think it's a new era. I think it's something that has to be explored carefully and used carefully with good taste like anything else.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, another, new, another new composition of mine written for a recent trip to you know where. And it's simply called Carnival. <laughs> 